Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna paint this adorable dog with a flower headband in kind of a loose style, but we are gonna tighten up bits to get some nice focus here. I wanna let you know that this video is a little bit more advanced than what I typically post on Wednesdays. However, there's no reason a beginner cannot attempt this. Um, I would recommend if you're new to painting, watch the video all the way through. And then when you go to paint, gather your supplies, have everything ready to go, and then paint along. Feel free to pause the video if you need to, because remember, nothing is any harder to paint than anything else. It just takes a little more time, and this video is going to take you a little time to paint. Um, this video is brought to you by jerrysartorama.com. I am using the Lucas watercolors here. I've got my palette right here, and this is the 48 set. You obviously don't need this many colors, and you can buy colors by the tube, which I will list in the video description. And we're going to sketch this together. So if you're not comfortable with your drawing ability and you don't want to sketch along with me, you could always uh, print out the photo that I'm going to link down below. It's from Unsplash. And you could trace the photo if that's easier for you. You do whatever is going to make the process more enjoyable and more rewarding for how you like to paint. So without further ado, let's dive right into the tutorial. So I'm going to start off just drawing with a mechanical pencil. I'm going to start off with a... Um, I'm going to start off with a circle to represent the kind of skull of the dog. Then I'm going to do kind of like an upside down U shape. Let's divide this in like half. Let's divide our circle in half. The upside down U shape is going to be on the bottom. The dog is looking straight at us. I'm drawing just kind of lightly so that um, hopefully you'll be able to see it, but I won't have too many lines to deal with later to erase. And this upside you, down U you is going to fall down below the circle that we drew. It's actually kind of like a rounded box, a little bit like a trapezoid, not too, not too much. I'm going to put um, circles on either corner of our little trapezoid. I'm going to turn it around to make sure. It's kind of like a duck, actually, right now. We're going to be doing a lot of wet to wet. We're going to almost abstract this dog a little bit, but we want to start off with a good, um, the pretty good sketch to begin with. I feel like this one is, this eye is too low. If you need a pattern, you can um, print off the photo from Unsplash and trace it. I just want to get this, there's a like kind of a white patch of fur there. I want to get that in. The nose is right here. Little nostrils in there. It's black, so it's tough to see. You're just kind of seeing the reflections of it, really. And then you've got the... Uh, I don't know if this is a pug or a bulldog. I don't know my, my little squishy face dog breeds very well. You can let me know in the comments below. I'm going to soften that shape there. I don't mind actually having a bunch of pencil lines. I do have a little bit more than I need, but I like having some pencil lines. I know some people don't. But I like it. I think it kind of shows the hand of the artist where they've been. And this might want to taper out just a smidgen. And then we've got our flowers up here. So we're going to have one there. I'm just doing uh, kind of like semicircles and circles to represent them. They're just going to be very loose shapes. And we've got some leaves. Oh, that's cute. I'm going to tap my dust off in the trash. Just make sure that those eyeballs lined up. I think I do. I think they're alright. we got to get the ear in. It's not going to look like, like a dog if we don't have that ear in there, right? Oh, that's cute. 
Oh, I also want to put in the, uh, the pupils and a little reflection. <laughs> He's cute. Uh, and get this other ear. that lined up pretty well. This one you can see a little bit more of the shape of the ear. And you've got the little strap of the head. Oh, we got a couple leaves. And you can see the strap of the headband. Oh, that's adorable or adorable. And we're going to put, oh, we're going to get the chin here. And the dog has a bow around its neck. It's probably what's what is uh, holding the oh, I don't like that. It's probably whatever what's holding the headband on. Let's make the bow come around. And then you can have the tails. Coming up like that animals that much. This is kind of fun. It's a nice fun challenge. And let's see. Get the, let's see the dogs. The chest and shoulder here. Just kind of, it's blurry. Which is alright because we won't have to worry too much about, about that. This dog is like, what have you gotten me into? Why am I wearing a bow? There's lots of pictures of this dog on Unsplash with various headdresses on, so I'm thinking that uh, he's, this is like an internet famous dog or something. And the flowers aren't really going to be the focal point, but I just want to get some petals in there before I start painting. Because once I start painting, I just want to have fun. I want it to be very free and loose. So that's another reason I kind of want my pencil lines to be kind of um, prominent. Because I know I want to be loose with the painting of this. And this is like a, a pretty fairly dark pencil. This is a, a 0.7 lead Bic Velocity mechanical pencil, so it's pretty dark. Um, it's probably what some people would call smudgy. I don't really seem to notice a problem with my my lead smudging, but a lot of people complain about lead smudging, so I just wanted to kind of warn you, this might not be the pencil for you, but but I like it. Now I'm just going to take another look at the eyes, make sure I didn't... I don't have one too far off. I really think it's alright. Something is... something is making me feel like it might be a little off, but I think we're going to be good. Now, the only thing I want to really erase is just any construction lines, the circle and the crisscross, because sometimes your watercolor paint will trap that stuff down. So I'm getting rid of any of the hairy stuff, any of the hairy lines I don't think I want. There. All right, we're going to tap off the, the stuff in the trash. I'm not going to tape it down. You can go ahead and tape it down if you want. Watch out for any finger smudges, because sometimes what happens is, like, I'll smudge it with my hands. I don't, it doesn't seem like the watercolor itself smudges it, but I'll smudge it with my hands when I go to, when I'm drawing. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is actually splatter on some water, because I want this kind of loose effect, like I did once with uh, the owl painting that was really popular on a live stream that one time, so you guys seem to like that, so I want to do that technique. I also did it with a flamingo. And I think a parrot. I'm going to do that same technique. So I'm just splashing on some clean water. So that way when I'm painting and my um, my paint hits some of those those packets, you're going to end up with those cool whooshes of color. I'm going to start, uh, I think I'm going to start on the body here. And I'm going to do wet into wet. So I'm just using the same big brush. This is the number 30 round. This video is brought to you by jerrysartorama.com. I'll be using their Lucas watercolors. You're going to see right here. Their Creative Mark Mimic brushes, which is what I'm using right here. 
and um, I'm using some Strathmore 500 series paper that you can find at Jerry's or you can find whatever your favorite paper is there because they seem to have all of it. All right, for colors, I'm going to use some of this gold ochre. And we can put some of that right in there just as is. I really like the um, the Lucas paints because they're so affordable. I'm going to grab a little bit of cyan. Put that up here near the back. Now that's a color that's in this kit. I don't think I've well, I don't think I've used it other than to swatch it, honestly. So I thought that would be nice to get this one, get that color in, and I'm gonna grab a little bit of the genuine rose. I'm not cleaning my brush because um, I don't want the dog to be pink, but I do want that color in there because I'm gonna use it in some of the flowers. I'm also gonna take that color. I'm just gonna wet my brush, and I'm gonna wet the areas on the face that would be lighter. And that would include, actually we could do the whole, we can just go ahead and do the whole face because we can layer over the darker colors. Avoid the eyeballs and avoid the flowers. I like to add like color to my animals because I think it just, um, I think it's just nice. I think it like gives them a little more personality. Is and the thing is, it you work on your values. As long as you have your values right, the uh, the picture's gonna look fine. And you may be like, oh, it's gonna look so weird. You got all these crazy colors, but really, as long as you have the values right, you're gonna be fine. I'm gonna clean my brush before I go back into that pink, though. I did have just a little bit too much smudge on there. But you can see how vibrant that is. We don't want it that that bright so I'm just kind of tapping it off and put some in there around the muzzle. Maybe even some up here around where the flowers are going to be because that will you'll see that color in there. Grab some of the cyan. Sometimes you'll put like a stroke of paint down and it'll make the doggy look sad. And I, I always feel like, oh no, don't worry, it's going to get better. Let me put a little bit of this cyan, cyan mud, you know, because we're in the muddy, we're in this kind of like very soft, diluted stage of the painting. So it's not really mud, but it's kind of like, you know, that sort of desaturated color. It's only mud when, when it's not on purpose, I think the cyan over here. This is a cotton paper and a cotton paper is a much easier to control when you're doing techniques like this so kind of keep that in mind if you're having a hard time you know using a cotton paper is going to help you quite a bit. Okay now I want to put a little blush on that um, on that bow. I think I'm I was going to do it in pink but I think the blue actually would look a little bit better because it seems like it's got a really pale blue so we're still doing that cyan but clean brush. But you don't want any big gobs of pigment, so see how I'm just kind of like really working it out on my on my palette. And I had a couple people ask me the last time I used this palette um, why my paint doesn't beat up because they had metal palettes and their paint always beaded up on it. And honestly, um, I find the more that you use a palette, the less it's going to beat up on you. And also, if you, um, I'm going to take. Oops, I think I grabbed the wrong color. Um, and also, if you're having trouble with your palette beating up, if you wash it with some dish soap or you use a little bit of, um, use this color, this is uh, Permanent Yellow Deep. If you use a little bit of like Dawn dish soap or whatever you have for dish soap, it doesn't have to be Dawn, um, that's going to help it from like, it, it's going to remove any factory grease and it's going to make it grab your paint a lot better. If you have stains, you can also use like a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser and you can remove stains that way and it works really well. I'm putting in some little green leaves there. Tucking a little of that color around the flowers. And I'm still doing this with the same number 30 brush. Now this brush um, comes in the value set of the Creative Mark Mimics. I really, really like that set, but they've also come out with a smaller set, which is more affordable. So if you didn't want like the super huge brushes that are in the regular value set, 
which is, I think it's only like 30 bucks. They have the, uh, they removed the two biggest brushes and I think it's like about $20 maybe and you get those other, you can, you know, try it out, which, you know, I like big brushes. So I, I like having those larger two in there. There's like this real big one and there's a big like two inch um, wash brush and then there's like a one inch brush. Uh, but if you don't, if you don't really care about those larger brushes, then that might not be for you. Now at this point, I'm going to switch just because I don't want to get so much pigment on my, on my brush. I'm going to go to the number eight round. This is also in that kit. This is probably my most used one. It's the number eight or the number 12. Those are both pretty, they both come to a razor sharp point. So it doesn't really matter which one I use for a lot of those. I want to get a little of that bright yellow in there. Boy, that seems bright compared to the tones on everything else, doesn't it? Um, I want to get a little bit of the cyan on its own, I think. Maybe get a little bit of the pink in there. Get a kind of a purple hue. Kind of almost like a shadowy purple. I'm going to mix it in a little, with a little of that green that we made. And I'm going to go that on this white flower here. Add a little bit into those petals as well. I feel like I want to blot that. That just seems way too bright. Yeah, take some of that out. That's really bright. Um, get some pink. Tone that down a little bit. I can add a little bit of that yellow to it to temper it. And I'm gonna paint this flower in. I don't. I feel like we haven't gotten into any of the uh, those splashes that we put out. Maybe we'll flick some on. Let's flick some of this pink on there. I do like how that water rushed back into the ear where I had painted that. A lot of that's going to go away because we're going to be putting darker colors on there, but still, it's kind of nice to enjoy right now while it's happening. So I'm just flicking in some colors. If you want bigger spatters, go ahead and use your bigger brush. I'm going to make some purple with the cyan. Cyan is a primary color. Um, if you think of like the old print computer printers, they would have that uh, cyan, yellow, and magenta. And so that pink I'm using is kind of like a magenta. So we can get a lot of, of a large variety of really crisp colors by using these. I want to have fun with this painting, be loose with it. Let the paint do its thing. We don't need to control everything. We can let the paint do its thing. I'm going to flick some of that color on there too. And if you have a big splot, it just your paint won't hit it for whatever reason, just go ahead and Drop the pigment into those big splashes that you have there if you can't get them to go. That's a nice way to be able to control where your color goes. I do that a lot, especially if I'm like, I don't want to mess up. <laughs> or I just want bigger splats than my, my uh, brushes are giving me. We've got some really fun stuff happening here. You can also splash water in. Um, if you get water on the on a wash area that you've already painted, though, you could get a back run, but it's less apt to happen on a cotton paper. I want a little more yellow in that background. I like that yellow. You can go ahead and paint some in. You can even use a spray bottle if you want. So it really comes in handy that we had such a dark because it's such a dark background. I tend to like to do this technique and not tape my paper down because then I can go right up to the edges. Oh, I think it's so pretty. I think I should mix up some green. Look at that pretty color. That's a cyan with that permanent yellow deep. Just those three colors give you so many options. And I think I'll put a little bit of that in the base of this flower and in this leaf. I think I need to make it less watery though because it's just dissipating too quickly. That 
yellow is not super transparent, it's a very warm yellow, so it's going to give me more of an olive color, but it's still really pretty. But it's gonna, not going to be as vibrant. Now I could put in other little leaves too here while I'm at it. Just kind of tuck those shapes right in around. Just paint what you feel. Uh, I'm going to do the, I want to do the eyes, I want to do the iris in there. Um, I'm going to start off with a really pale, I'm going to blot my brush off because I don't want to have too much liquid in here. And I'm going to do the iris with this gold, with this yellow, the permanent yellow deep. Oh, at the end of the video, remind me, I want to show you the, um, the thumb, the practice piece, because it's a little scary. I didn't want to show you at the beginning because I thought people would just click away and not want to try because it'd be like, oh, that painting's ugly. Um, but I'm going to show you my little thumbnail because I did like a little five minute sketch to begin with. And I really like the way it came. I mean, it wasn't, it's not pretty, honestly. It's, um, it's really kind of messy. I think I also want to bring in a little brown. Let's see, this is like an English red, which is kind of like, um, or is it? No, this is burnt sienna. Let's take a little burnt sienna. We're going to do a little bit of that on the edges. So the gold still can show through. And I'm going to go back in with the gold and just kind of blend it in. I like to have the eyes detailed on a painting, um, even the rest of it, even if the rest of it is kind of loose, just because I feel like it just captures the interest, draws the person in, and gives the animal a little personality. Okay, I also want to have a little bit of a... Um, under color on the nose. I want to have maybe just a little bit of that cyan color. And then I also want to have some of that uh, in the snout, kind of where the, the light's reflecting. Let's soften that up. Looks like he has a funky mustache. Hope you like the drawing portion. Um, I had somebody ask to, for me to do more drawing when I'm doing a watercolor tutorial, so uh, that's why I thought we would do that today. I'm going to go in also with a cyan kind of around the back here. That will be... I'm planning on putting black on top. I'm actually going to use a black pigment. I think that would be kind of neat. Maybe I won't. I don't know. I'm planning on it though. A little bit of that here. But I like to have something underneath. Maybe something to mix into. Let's see. I feel like we need some of that cyan in there because there'll be parts on the center of the ear that we won't see. That won't be black. That's a, that's a problem with black. Black is tricky because you, when you're using black, um, and same thing with when you're using white or you're leaving the white of the paper. I think that's why um, it's not a bad, idea, a bad idea to stay away from white and black paint because white is rarely white. When you're looking at something, is usually so many other colors um, represented in white areas. So if you just paint white or you just leave white, you end up missing a depth that that you really just need to be kind of in tune to what the colors are uh, around an area and paint those. So like if you're painting a white flower, you may like really look and you'll see yellow or you'll see blue or purple or green, these other colors that, you know, we perceive it as white, but that's, there's more there than just white. I'm going to put some black in there though. Alright, I want to do a little bit more to that bow. Even though it's going to be a really colorful picture, there, I'm sorry for that glare, I can see there's some glare on the paper. Even though it's going to be really colorful, we're kind of building it up slowly. I 
The paper's pretty soggy. <laughs> if you can't tell, you probably could tell by the way I'm holding it. It's pretty soggy right now. This ribbon looks kind of like an organza, so I want to keep it fairly translucent. I did a video a couple weeks ago on how much water like I like to use when you're painting to kind of give you a feeling for it. And I'm leaving my water brushes in my little rag uh, on camera so you can kind of see how, how wet everything is. Okay, I think I would still think it would be really cool to have some of the black, uh, adding some of the black while things are wet so some of the pigment can flow. So what I have here is um, ivory black. Uh, I'm just going to put it on my palette over here. Getting up a decent amount of it so that I'll be able to mix it in with other stuff. I'm going to get some cyan out, handy that out of the way. That's probably in your way to watch. I don't want that. And we'll also get out some of the Rose Genuine here because we want to mix it into some purpley color. Okay, let's get some of the black and the purple and let's come right over here. This is going to be soft anyway because it's out of focus. So I'm going to go right ahead and throw that in and let it just kind of flow out, let it do its thing, let it get all fuzzy or blurry or what have you. Oh, it's going out to a, to a puddle. I like that. I want to soften the edge. That is here. I want to add a soften it. I think I want to add a little blue to it because sometimes when you have things out of focus. The, it's like the color splits and you'll see a couple colors together. Fade it out a little bit more. And when you're fading you need less water on your brush than you have than you had in the previous brush, brush load so it can help you avoid blooms but even if there is a little bit of a soft ruffly edge it's fine because that's what we have um, that's what we would have in the out of focus areas so I'm just doing a little bit of hints of the body over here And I think I'll try to blot that off of the ribbon a little bit, but I like how the colors are are spreading there. So I don't want to I don't want to lose all of that. A dry paper towel though. Okay, I'm gonna go into the nose area now. I'm still with that number eight round. up a little bit of the black and cyan mix and I'm gonna go in and in my first layer well second layer we would have that really light layer of cyan already so the highlights gonna have that really pale bit of blue on it that we left And I want to go through and try to get as much of this, um, this kind of pale black as I need. There's a lot of kind of modeling here, but it wouldn't be as super dark as like the, the pupil of the eye. So I just kind of want to get that lighter black in. They have that kind of splotchy fur and skin coloration here. But I didn't want to just have white underneath it. That's why we put the washes in because it would have looked too stark. 
and it would have just looked like black and white instead of the different the different colors that are there. And there's a little bit on his chin here, his lower lip chin. Oh, too much, I think. My brush is a little too wet. That's the colors spreading out because my brush is a little too wet. Okay, so I'm going to add a little water to that black. But I'm going to blot my brush so I don't get too much pigment out. I'm going to splay my bristles by pinching them. And I am just going to kind of get some little texture here. I think this is just really short fur and you can see the skin underneath. I just want to kind of get that. Because we're still painting in the very light area. I know this probably looks really dark and scary, but it's it's really still the light area. I have very little pigment, hardly any on my brush. Hope you guys like this tutorial. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, it's probably going to be so long. I'm just dry brushing texture to get that the uh, texture of the short fur that is kind of wrinkly. It can be a challenge to get that cute, like, kind of puppyish expression and get the, um, you know, get the detail that you want to get. There. Okay, so now I want to go in and get some darker color. I'm thinking I might go with just a smaller synthetic brush because I want something that's not going to carry too much water. I'll just go with this number two Da Vinci Nova, I think. Because I just, I just know I'm not going to get too much water in my mix and it will be super dark. And the darkest part of this picture I would want to be the, the dog's eyes, the dog's pupils. And then if I use a straight black from the pan, um, I know that I can go and touch up areas in here if I want to, and I won't have to worry about mixing or matching. And because I'm, I'm kind of leaving the reflection a little large, and if I decide that that's too much and I need to make it smaller later, then I can. Okay, and then I want to... I'm pressing on my brush more. I want to get the upper lash line in there because it's pretty dark and it casts a shadow over the top of the eye. You don't need a lot of detail, you just need a little bit uh, in the right spot. There, so we've got that, I find that once we've got that full range of values in, it helps quite a bit. Um, this is going to be our darkest color, so that's going to help. I feel like the reflection might be a little bit off on this eye. I think I might need to scooch that over a little bit. And hopefully that iris is dry. I'm 
scooching the I scooched my the iris not the iris, I scooched the reflection from where I drew it over just a smidgen. Probably a good thing I didn't uh, stop and scan my pattern because it probably would have been my drawing because it probably would have been a little off. So if you don't want to draw it, you could definitely go and, and print off the photo. It's fun if you can wait to do the eyes last, but because that's the darkest value, I do like to get in a little bit quicker, a little sooner. And I'm looking back and forth at my at my reference photos up on my computer screen, so I'm looking back and forth like fairly frequently between my computer screen and my paper where I'm working. So make sure that when you're painting this, you're referring to your reference. And when you're painting anything, just refer to your reference. I know you think you can remember. We all think we have these great memories, <laughs> but um, if you're trying to really paint something as it is, you really need to look back at that reference, especially when you're drawing. Now, let's see, is her nose dry? I thought the nose is still a little bit wet. Um, I'm trying to see if there's any place I can work on right now. I can work around the eyes actually. So we've got our darkest part in there and then you can look to see if there's any other areas that are as dark as what you just did and right where the snow kind of overlaps it's fairly dark so I'm gonna go in and put that in there and depending on you know how much paint and water your brush holds you might be able to put a color in and then just start flicking out from there and your brush might get, it might just kind of like lose its paint as you're going so you get that, you get a nice uh, natural blend. I want to have, remember where we drew that, um, that white patch in the center, this white area here, <coughs> excuse me, that's, uh, I'm just doing little flicks of my brush and I'm letting some light, some white show through so it looks natural. It's a little bit more watery of a mix, so I can go in and that's going to be a little bit lighter. It's hard to tell. Black and white is also very difficult to tell when it's wet what you have. So you may think, oh, well, this is way too dark, but it's, it's only looking as dark as it is because of the reflection of the water. The water's enhancing it, but then when it dries, you don't have such a... Um, such a pronounced, it's not so dark, it looks much lighter once it's dry, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And I like that because we don't have a ton of, we, we uh, did our wash underneath and we're not going to have these like white streaks like underneath, we're going to have color in our shadows, which I think, I, is uh, important. We have highlight, color in our highlights and shadows. I'm just getting the edges here. Oh, I can see a couple little whiskers, so I'm putting those right in since I got a small brush and I'm right at it. And I've got a little cheekbone line here almost, it looks like. I want to go in and put that in with the dark. So there's nothing wrong, there's no bad colors, there's no, there's n like any color can work, you know, don't think, well, I can't use that color because it's against the rules, like white or black, it's against the rules. I can tell you that I think you probably will be a more successful painter if you learn how to mix your own blacks and you learn how to save the whites, but there is a reason for every color out there. I mean, not just because it sells. I mean, that's probably a, that's a big reason for a lot of the new colors that are out there, but the old masters used black. They used white. 
they used it they used it well though they they practiced and they trained and they made sure they uh, understood you know how to get those lights and darks by mixing before they charged it with black but they used it I'm going to I see like a little um, little dark spot under the eye so this is and this is going to be a little bit more advanced of a lesson than the typical Wednesday lesson but um, but it's nice to do that once in a while I think anybody can do this you just got to put the time in my painting is dry I actually um, took a break while I was working on it I uh, made dinner and then it was late so I decided I would put it away for the night and come back to it the next day so I'm going to continue working on the black here. If this is very repetitive for you, you can skip ahead till I'm working on something else. That's totally fine. But I did want to leave it in just in case somebody, um, it was helpful for someone. I'm going to scooch it over a bit so I can have a little room for my hand here. And I'm going to go and add some of the black in the ears. And when I do this, I can actually um, kind of negatively paint around the flower so I can get any like definition in those flower petals that I want and although I hate to cover up some of these um, delicious colors here I am going to um, I'm going to be covering some of that up if I water down my paint though I can you know let some of that show through in fact I want kind of a little soft treatment to the edge of the ears so what I'm doing is I'm putting the color down and then I am just going over with just water and softening that edge. And I can also bring back some of that nice texture, like a head with that purple in there by, um, I'm going to use a bigger brush, by putting in the color a little more dilute and then dripping in some of the stronger color because I do need some of that stronger color in there. That little number two brush is nice for putting concentrated color in without a lot of water, but I do find it's a little limiting as far as, um, as far as being able to cover a lot of ground and then this painting could take us a long time. But I figure since I'm traveling, I'm not, probably not gonna be able to put as many videos up this week and that will give you something to work on if you're a watercolor fan because I won't have sketchbook Sunday up this week. Now I'm going to go in with some of the more strong black. Now I don't, you know, I didn't pre-spray this while I before I started painting today. I usually will pre-spray pre-spray my paints, but when you're working in a, with a professional set, you usually don't need to pre-activate them, but it's definitely a help if you are working with a um, uh, like a student grade set. Now, I think I want to just kind of get maybe a little bit of another color in there. I think I'll go with some of that pink and just kind of charge it into the edge of the wash. Maybe even do a little yellow to show maybe some sun. Sometimes you get neat things when you mix yellow and black because black will have undertones. And I'm just going to soften those edges. some of that cyan blue going and actually I feel like I need to adjust to the shape a little bit I got that a little too rounded I don't want to make the ears oops I got a bead of water watch out for beads of water on those smaller brushes because then you can end up with way more paint than you bargained for Just gonna change that line a little bit so it swoops up. Yeah, 
in and then out a little bit. There we go. I just want to make sure I don't have any puddles because if I have puddles I'll get a bloom or I might not want it. And just debating whether I want to soften that edge a little bit more. I think I do. So I'm cleaning my brush, blotting off excess water, wiping off the metal part, the ferrule. And I'm just going to soften it a little bit there. You may need to clean your brush a few times as you're softening. There. I just don't want it as sharp as the eyes, so if you want a crisper line, you can leave it, but I think it will look a little bit better if you go, keep it a little softer. Um, going back in the black, and I'm just going to give a little bit of that dark up here, get that shape. Every dog would have their own markings, but since I do have that reference photo to go by, I'm going to go buy it. Doing little hatches around the, um, the white area so I can get some of that. In fact, I'm going to turn it so it's a little bit easier to do. So I can get some of that kind of white fur showing through and I won't have to go back in with pencil or gouache. Not that that's a bad thing, it's just, um, you know, it's another step and it's another, another amount of time. And I don't know if anyone will click on my video with it being longer as it is, you know. Hashtag YouTube problems, right? <laughs> I didn't mess up that shape. I think it's about right. Now I'm going to go in with a darker black here, just the black on its own from the pan. I, I do tap it off a little bit so I don't get any clumps and I make sure my paint's flowing. And here around the eye, I want to get some furs kind of coming out from that way. Just a little bit behind the muzzle and that will help define that shape. I apologize if my hand gets in the way. That's the toughest thing, I think, um, about making tutorials is having the camera set up so that, like, you can see what you're doing and it's not in your way. Um, and also so your viewer can see what you're doing. Too much white there. I always got some kind of gray fur here. I kind of got a mix. So I'm going to do that same dry brush. Not really dry brush technique, actually. You do need enough water on your brush so your paint flows. I'm still using that number two round. Um, but on the cheeks, there's like much more gray on the side. Uh, so I want to make sure that I have some little wisps. So I just basically, what I'm leaving behind will be the gray. And what I'm painting is the just the black hairs that are in there. So to accomplish this, I'll kind of paint everything the same and then I'll just fill in over where I want it to be more of a solid black fur area. And I'm just gonna define my shape a little bit. And I'm gonna do that by tapping, just kind of stippling because that will fade into whatever I do for fur. And I'm looking back and forth at my reference to make sure that um, that I've got that delineated properly. And really, you know, you're not going to see many lines. For, for those of you that are bothered by the pencil lines, I don't think you're going to see that many, really. I 
And I find like if you're doing a splashy technique, it's really handy to have those pencil lines there. I might end up getting a ruler or something I put down as a bridge because I'm noticing um, really, because of the way that I'm, I'm filming and sitting, I'm feeling the need to like rest my hand. The nice thing about breaking up your painting session over a couple days is that you can come back when your eyes are nice and fresh. Like this is like, uh, it's um, 7.50 in the morning, so my eyes are, are nice and fresh. I have no fatigue. I'm building up those little wisps. I can go in kind of inky like where I know I've got kind of just a solid dark area where there's no texture that can be seen. I think probably the biggest benefit of using a smaller brush isn't the control, it's more the uh, the lack of water or it's more the water control than the actual brush control. There's a nice highlight um, on the eyelid, on the uh, like bottom eyelid or like right below the eyelid, bottom eyelid, that I want to preserve. There's a little bit of highlight above. You can always go back in and take and, you know, add over, but it's difficult to, to remove a crisp highlight like that, so, you know, it might look weird for a bit, but Embrace the weird and just, you know, you're going to have hot mess phases. There's always a hot mess time, you know, let it just, you know, be, be cool with that. Embrace it. Everybody has a hot mess. Oh, that's right. I'm going to show you my, um, I'm going to show you my hot mess of a sketch of a thumbnail sketch, but I knew that it was going to work, even though the sketch is messy. It's not something I would like post on Instagram, like, hey, look at me, I'm such a great artist. Um, because I know I get all sorts of, no, you ain't, you don't know how to paint. Look at that, it's a mess, it's a hot mess. Why are you posting that? Um, I'm gonna show you guys at the end of the video though. Uh, but it gave me enough information to know that, yeah, this is gonna work, these colors are going to work. Um, um, this is This has potential. All right, so I gotta fill some of that in because it looks a little mangy. I need to round the skull a little bit there. You're probably thinking, no, oh, you should have just filled that in from the beginning, Lindsay. But you need to build some of this stuff up. Okay, I also need to do something over here. And the fur is, let me get that brush out of the way. And the fur is kind of coming down over the cheekbone, so I'm going to put it in like that. Yeah, sometimes I leave just areas unpainted because I know that I'm going to go in there with like a, with like some hatching and then I'm going to want to leave some highlight behind. But it might not make sense, you know, if you're watching somebody paint, why is she leaving that, you know? Figuring out how much highlight I want to remain. But we did the underpainting, you know, we have those colors underneath, so it's not like it looks like, oh my gosh, it's got a stark white line around it. It looks a little more natural. All right, we're going to go over to that ear. Again, if you're bored with this, you can go ahead and skip ahead. I'm going to turn this upside down to paint it. I wish I could easily flip my reference photo while I'm working, but it's on my computer screen. That'd be because that would be really handy to flip the reference photo as I'm as I'm painting. I'm gonna start by doing a light gray wash. Well, not really light gray, but I'm, I'm mixing the black in with some water, and I am going to kind of carve around using that number eight round. If you're more comfortable using a smaller brush, because you're not sure. You know, you don't want to get too much water. You can do that. <clears throat> I want some color in here too.
this is more light on this side, so... Which is weird because of the way the highlight are in the eye, you wouldn't think to be more light in this ear, but that's the reference photo is showing me there is. It's not like super light, it's just like, I'm just, I think, seeing some of the, you seeing less fur and more skin. I just love seeing my paint just kind of flow together like that. Oh, so good. And I got the shape pretty well. Um, right off the bat, so I don't think I need to mess with that too much. Hopefully, when I flip it around, I'll be able to tell for sure. Actually, I usually can see the shapes a lot better if I have it upside down. Now, I am trying to stay within the um, my sketch just so I have room to soften it out because I want that little bit of a soft glow on the edge. Now the neat thing about black um, that you might not know, you might know, I don't know, uh, is that it granulates. A lot of blacks have a beautiful granulation and it is, um, I'm just adding a little yellow on the rim to kind of give it that glow. Uh, so it can give you a beautiful texture, especially when you're working with something that's like an animal um, or maybe rocks, something like that that's, that's very natural. So it's just another reason to uh, to give it a try. So I'm gonna turn that back around again. I gotta watch out for puddles. Now remember, wet paint is gonna look darker. So I've gotta make sure that I'm a little bit darker than what I want here. And I wanna avoid puddles, but I'm on cotton paper, so I'm less likely to get the puddles. And I'm just checking the size here. I feel like maybe I did not feel like this ear needs to be a little bit bigger. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Keep cleaning my brush, blotting it, and we grab some of that yellow. Just hit the edges with it. Pretty imperceptible, but I know it's there. Now I do want to soften the edge a little bit. I think I'll do that with a smaller brush and a few passes if I need to. water off the ferrule so you don't end up with a big back run where you don't want it. And I'm just going to go half on half off around the edge. Let it let it flood out a little bit. Clean, blot. Soften that up a little bit. And if you need to tidy anything up, you can do that with the with this little brush that's a little sloppy there. There we go. Alright, now we can work onto the snout a little bit. That's a little uh that's one to kind of break yourself into, I think. That's um because there is there's not much to it, but you want to be accurate with it. So I'm going to get the darkest areas, which is kind of like in the nostril. I've got my lighter and mid-tone areas in already. And it's wet nose, hot, healthy pup. So you're going to have, um, you know, a lot of reflections. And you've got that kind of leathery texture, so I want to stipple. 
after I've gotten the, the initial real dark color in there. And these shadows are going to form the shape and form of the nose. And I start the darkest area and stipple out so that as my brush runs out of paint, I'm getting more of a softer color. Oh, so cute. And then down here, you're kind of getting into the fur and the uh, muzzle where you can see the skin itself under the fur. And you can see a little bit of a division up here. There. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. So I'm using this more diluted black over here and I'm going to continue. I'm going to continue like that. I'm just kind of looking what's the darkest area that I want to be adding in. Remember this if it's if your brush is really wet your your paint's going to look darker than it is so try not to um you know try not to worry and you know just keep in mind you're gonna you're gonna fade a shade. You're gonna fade a shade. That's easy to remember because it rhymes. And just think of all the different textures that you're working on with this. You've got the smooth fur, you've got this area here that's you've got the short stubbly fur that's a little bit more textured, or it's going to show a little more texture. There's also little furs, um, little white like whiskers, but if you if you kind of stipple on here, I really think that you're going to give the impression of those furry little whiskers without having to actually paint them. Now up over the nose, there is a little bit of like velvety, soft fur. It was really short furs, but we did, um, we did that kind of like gray scale at first when we were doing our washes and we did that dry brushing. So we don't need to do too much in there. So just don't, don't worry about it too much. You can always take a break and come back and decide whether you need it later. So I'm basically pat pat patting with my brush and I'm going until I run out of paint. I clean my palette after I'm done a painting. I wanted to also mention that because I know a lot of people just leave that paint out thinking they're going to go get back to it. It's really not a lot of paint there and you're more likely to just muddy up your next painting than you are to, you know, save material and save any time. So, I mean, I've, I've, I'm guilty of occasionally putting away my palette, forgetting to wipe it up, because sometimes it's so pretty. It's like, oh, I don't want to ruin that. It's so pretty. Um, but uh, before you start another painting, definitely, definitely clean it. This is going to be such a long video. I hope nobody minds. I hope, hope it's useful. I guess people that don't want a long video just won't bother watching it. They'll just stop by long enough to click a thumbs down and then they'll be on their way. <laughs> People. <laughs> now something you can do, even if the fur is white, you could pull a little whisker like like I did there. I mean that was a no that was a white whisk no, those were dark whiskers. I see this few so many little little tiny whiskers. Um, you know, you could just do a dark whisker there and it's, you know. It'll uh, it'll do the trick. I don't want to pull anything over the bow yet because I think I might want to do some work on that bow because I like to do fabric. And it's just gonna be another interesting texture. And remember to kind of skip around a little bit because you might decide like you might tire of doing all the detail. So as long as you bring everything up to like a comparable level of detail. 
obviously your focal point would have a little more detail, um, then it will look weird where you stop. You know, like my loose thumbnail sketch, you could just keep it, keep a loose sketch and, and call that, call that done. Or you could work for, you know, a week and a half every day and have like a hyper realism, which I'm not going to do because that's not how I like to work. I would tire of that way quick. I really admire people that can do that, that have that sort of patience and um, skill and, you know, commitment. So just leaving a little bit of, of white behind gives you the impression of those little, um, little, little furs. So I can pull a couple little furs down, and the the um, under the chin is actually pretty light, so I'm not going to do anything with the black there. I'm just going to just giving a second little pass around and deciding like if there's any of these little wrinkles I want to highlight. a little too dark on that. I may have to scrub that out a little bit. But that's alright because we're not working on stark white so so it's fine. And I'm just putting in a little bit of, whoops, shoot, got that in the background. Just a little bit of furs on the edge. Just a little hatching to define it. I'll probably have to scrub some out a little bit there too. We'll see when it dries what it looks like. That might end up being a whisker. I think I might just leave that be. Rather than trying to scrub it out, just that'll be a whisker. I feel like a fancy handlebar dog mustache whisker. Well, my fans are lemons. There we go. I want a little definition under the chin, and that's bugging me, but I don't want to do it with black. I'm going to use, we used, we only used a smidgen of burnt sienna. I'm going to grab that. I had a little black on my brush, I kind of like that too. I think that color is going to be fine. Maybe a little of that gold. Make sure I don't have any beads of water on my ferrule. And that's looking darker because it's wet. And I'm just going to throw in some furs here. A little texture. I can always wash over that with a little yellow ochre if I need to later, but I think that's that's pretty good. All right. I'm going to take a little break, and when we come back, we will work on the torso and the bow. I want to keep a really simple treatment for the bow. I'm going to use a three quarter inch flat. This is a number 20 Mimic Kalinsky. It's another one of the brushes from Jerry's Artorama. I'm going to wipe off a little area of my palette so I can get some mixing area here. Now this does fold out. There's another mixing area, but I want to keep it on camera for you. I'm going to dampen my brush. Let me get a fresh blotting rag here, fresher here anyway. So I'm going to dampen my brush. I'm going to blot it off. I'm going to get half of it in that cyan. And I'm just going to work it across here. Now hopefully that's just going to give me a little bit of a stain of color. You could practice it on a, a scrap if you want. Oh yeah, see it just gives me a little bit of a stain. I want the colored side in towards the pup. I'm gonna reload. Now I can also get into some of this blue black mix here.
and add a little bit, a little bit more shadow, but I don't want a ton. I just want to give it a little bit of toning there, and then I can go in with a smaller brush and add some details. Not a lot though, because the, the focus is the face. And the, and the photo it looks like it's like kind of like a white bow, but I just wanted to bring that color in a little bit more. I just want to hint at the bow shape because I can't really see it very well, so I'm just kind of making it up. And I want the soft look of organza, which is like a, a kind of transparent ribbon material. I heard an adage once and it said, and it was about wearing makeup, and it said, having more time to put on your makeup doesn't mean that you use more makeup. It just means you have it more expertly applied. And that's kind of like like watercolor, just because you're spending more time on the painting doesn't mean you're going to use more paint. It just means you're it, actually you're going to use probably the same amount of paint or less paint. You're just going to apply it more precisely. You're going to spend more time in the application. I like the cyan color. I'm surprised I've never used it that much before. gives it a little bit, a little bit more structure, and that's about it. So for the body, I'm not going to spend a ton of time. Um, this is an 8x10, so I think I'll stick with a number 8 brush. You could go up to the 12 if you want to, or if you're working larger, probably go to the number 12. I am going to darken the shoulder area. I am going to work within the shape because I'm going to want to fade it out. So I'm just going to go in there. And get that basic shape. Kind of go to my line, my sketch line. A little cyan on the edge of that. Actually, maybe make myself a little purple because I can definitely see a little bit of purple in some of that. Seeing the edge where the colors mix. I got a pop-up notification on my computer that I need to move because I can't see what I'm painting. Maybe a little bit of that yellow just on the rim here. I feel like my black isn't juicy enough. Here, let's get in there. It's drying too quick. It's a rainy day today, so I, and it's cold, so the heat's on. So my office is um, quite toasty, and everything's just drying really quick because of the because it's the furnace is on. I'm just gonna scrub a little bit on the edge to get that. Look what I want to flick in some color there because I want that to kind of dis dissipate and I'm softening the edge with a wet brush. 
If you get too much sprawl, then you can go in and soak some of it up. So make sure I don't have a line there. And I want to splash some other colors over here. I think let's do And that way if you get some blossoms into the, the torso, I think that will look kind of cool. A little bit of unexpected joy. And maybe do a little bit of, maybe a little bit of that golden yellow that we started off. Mix that with a little bit of that brighter. There, and then I've got a, I've got a puddle down there, so that will give me a back run, and I think, I think that'll be kind of neat. Let's soften that area. So if you don't, if you want to stop where the puddle's going, just blot it. You stop the water, you're going to stop the, um, you're going to stop where it will go. It's watercolor is lazy; it's going to follow the path of least resistance. So I really like a technique like that because it gives us the impression of what's happening, but it doesn't um, it doesn't like compete with the highly focused areas that we have. So I do want to get a little bit of the torso here. And we actually have a little bit of leg. But again, since it's not really that apparent on the reference photo, I just want to just indicate, I want to suggest it, but I don't want to like, don't want to, um, I don't want to like hit somebody over the head with it. I just want it kind of like a suggestion because if you can't really see everything, you better off just put a little bit in and let people's imagination fill in the blanks. Make sure your bow's dry before you do this. Although you could glaze a little bit of that uh, watered down color in there if you want to because that would, um, you probably see through that a little bit. I'm just getting a little bit of yellow on the edge of that because you've got the furs intermingling, intermingling and also um, on the edges of objects, the light kind of splits pigments sometimes and then you see some cool colors happening there I like that I like the lost and found edge there I like that broken bit of edge there um, I'm just going to use some of the colors on my palette to just do some shade and toning in here oh my tummy's growling I hope that doesn't come up on camera but I guess that Heather told you like a secret or anything And this is where you really just kind of trust your um, your intuition. I'm looking at the photo. I'm seeing these very pale colors. I don't have a ton of color or water on my brush. I'm just kind of enough to be, be able to put it down there and mix it. Great way to use up what's left on your palette too, because you know those colors are going to mix, are gonna are gonna work together. And you can help like break elements apart away from each other. If that feels a little crazy, you can add a little of the burnt sienna. Here and there. I feel like I want a little, maybe a little toning on the snout. And the nice thing about this brush is you actually can get a really fine point with it. And it holds a lot of water. I want to get a little burnt sienna here on the edges of the mouth. It's kind of pink, but I didn't want it like... Burnt Sienna has enough pink in it, enough of that red pinky undertone. Just 
just little bits of paint. Remember, more precisely applied. You're not using more paint just because you're spending longer. You're just spending more time in the application of it. I like to boost up the colors in my head when I'm when I'm doing this. Like I say, okay, I see a little bit of a blue tone gray, then I'm gonna pump it up and put it make it more turquoise, or I see a little pinky brown, I'm gonna make it more pink. That's something that you can do with your paint. I guess you could do it with photographs now, but I was just saying <laughs> yeah, you can do that with a paint, you can't do that with a photo, but I guess you can now <laughs> nowadays. I'm going to add a little shading to the eye. I'm going to go in with the Burnt Sienna. Work it off on my brush a bit so I don't have too much and just a little bit on the edges. You could do that with a colored pencil as well. Give it that soulful look. I think the highlight around that eye is a little strong, so we'll lift over and see on a little of the um, black. I'm just going to tone that down a little bit. Because not only are we painting the fur, we're painting the reflections. Any adjustments that you need to make, go ahead and make them now. We're almost done. I'm going to do the flowers. Something to the flowers, though. Not a lot, though, because they're not the focal point. The cute puppy face is the focal point. I want to put just a little bit of shading into these guys here. Oh my goodness, my tummy is really rolling. I need to have some breakfast. Just kind of just define it a little bit. Don't too crazy because you don't want to pull the attention away from the eyes. The eyes are the soul of this painting. Yellow, little golden. Just to make your, basically to make your pencil marks not look quite so prominent. I'm just kind of scumbling in here. Really kind of just a little bit of gray color there just to get a little shout out to the sunflower. There, I think that this is done. I really like the way it came out. Um, I would definitely paint more animals in this style. I thought the photograph was gorgeous, and I will link to that. The, um, the, the Unsplash user that posted this is called Maggie Loves Orbit, um, and I think they're on, they might be on Instagram too, so I'll see if I can find that, that uh, photographer. So, as I promised, I'm gonna show you my thumbnail. This was my thumbnail sketch. This is where I worked out my colors. I just did a quick sketch of the face. Is this gonna work out right? What do I think? And even though this is unrefined, I could see the colors that were working. I could, you know, tell from this that the painting was gonna be all right, and that's what we ended up for a final painting. So, you know, don't let the hot mess define the whole piece. It's okay to be messy, it's okay to learn, it's okay to have things be in an ugly phase for a while. It's okay if a painting doesn't come out because you're going to learn and that's gonna make your next painting stronger. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I know it was a bit long, but hopefully you got some value out of it. Please give me a thumbs up before you go. If you like this video and you like videos like this, please share it on social media, share it with your friends. That helps me know that um, there's value in this and if people watch it, then I'll make more. If people don't watch it, then I'll realize that this is not what you guys want and uh, that'll be a helpful information too. Thank you again so much for watching. Until next time, happy grafting.